Hey everybody, Kevin from MechanicalVantage.com. Earlier this week on one of the online forums, somebody posted a little print of a part they're trying to draw in AutoCAD. They're just learning over there and they're looking for some recommendations. And as I looked at the part, I thought it was kind of a fun little part to try to duplicate inside of Fusion. And uh, I thought I would go and redraw this part in Fusion and you guys could kind of see how I go and approach drawing something like this. Uh, I'm not saying that the way I'm going to do this is 100% the best way. And if you have a better way, I would love to hear it. You can leave it in the comments or email me at info at mechanicaladvantage.com. And I'd, be, I'd love to see the way that you'd like to do it. And we could show that method as well. So I'm going to put a little image of the photo up here for a minute uh, where I took the screenshot. And I'll try to put a uh, link to this in the description so you can download it and have this thing to try to draw with. So I'm in Fusion and I'm gonna go and start making this part. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this as drawing exercise. Give that a save. And then one of the things I recommend, especially for new users, is that you right click on your uh, design name and create a new component for the part that you're gonna design in. Now, if you're 100% confident that you're never gonna have more than one component in your design, I'm okay sort of not doing this, but if you think you're gonna do soft jaws or you're gonna make an assembly or something out of it, then I really want you to take this step. So let's just rename this uh, component to be bracket, if I can spell. So there we go, there's bracket. And now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna create my base sketch. So I'm gonna choose my new sketch tool and I'm gonna put this up on the top plane. And the command that I'm gonna start with is gonna be the rectangle. So I'm going to draw out this rectangle and I'm not going to be super careful about where I place it or where I draw it. So I'm just going to type in my base dimensions and on the total height of this is going to be 6.3. I'm going to hit tab to get to the other field and the total width of this particular uh, rectangle is going to be 4.12 and I'll go ahead and hit uh, enter to accept that. Now I might just move this a little bit to make it cheat. Uh, I could have done, there's nothing stopping me from doing a center point rectangle and orienting everything around my uh, origin point here. I thought I would do it this way because this would kind of like be the zero zero point of the whole part. So to get this located exactly where I want to go, I'm going to use the midpoint constraint between this line and the origin point. And now you can see my sketch is black and fully defined. I'm going to finish my sketch and I'm going to go to a home view. Uh, the one thing this print didn't have on it is a thickness. So the thickness doesn't really matter. It's a, more of a profile part. So we'll just extrude this. I'm going to extrude this up maybe like an inch. Uh, I could even go, if I wanted to, I could do a symmetric, maybe I'll do that, and I'll do a total width of an inch. So go ahead and hit OK. Now you can see my part is perfectly centered on the origin as well in the uh, Z axis. All right, so what would I do next? Now normally I would leave my fillets until the very end, but in this case, the fillets, there's not many fillets on this part, and the fillets can really help me locate some features on here instead of doing some math. So I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add the fillets onto the part. So I'm going to start the fill command, and with select other on, I can select through my part. And those two edges are going to get the fillet, and that's going to be a fillet radius of 0.56. I'll go ahead and, and hit the enter button. Okay, so now that I have the fillet on there, uh, there's a little, a uh, couple little angled cuts on here. I'm going to work on that next. So I'm going to go and start a new sketch. I'm going to start the line command, and I'm just going to come down here somewhere, kind of draw like that, and kind of draw like that. Again, uh, not being too careful about what I was doing right there, because I'm going to come back and dimension everything and get it all set up. So we'll do a dimension, and between that edge and that edge, it's going to be 3.5 inches. And then the angle between these two edges right here is going to be 15 degrees. And then the angle between these two edges here is going to be 135 degrees. So we got that on there. Now, I'm not black yet, and if you want, you can kind of drag these things around to see what's missing. And so you can see that I definitely need another dimension. So I'm going to start the dimension command again, and I'm going to go from this point to this end point and bring that over in the horizontal direction so it's a vertical dimension. And that dimension is going to be 1.6. And when I add that, you can see that everything turns black on my sketch, and I'm going to stop right there. So I'm going to finish my sketch. I'm going to go to a home view. And then I'm going to start the extrude command and I'm going to click on that. I like to drive the direction I want to go. And instead of typing a distance, I almost always want to use the through all, especially if I know it's going to go through all, all the time. I'm just going to set that one so I never have to come back to it again. And I'll hit OK. <clears throat> OK, so I've got the little uh, couple angled cuts on there. I think what I want to do next is work on locating a couple holes. 
And to do that, I'm gonna create a sketch on this top face and I'm gonna drop in a couple sketch points. Uh, so I'm gonna try to get one located at the, at the concentric to this outside edge. And then I'm gonna come down and put the second one right about there. A couple things I know about that second point is it's vertically located from the top point and it's horizontally located from this end point of the line. So those two points are located off of geometry and I didn't even have to create any dimensions to locate those. So I'm gonna finish my sketch. I'm gonna to go to my home view and we can go and use the whole command to click on those two points. I want their distance to be all the way through. Um, these are just plain old simple holes. I'm just coming down here and set my diameter to be 0.5. And there we go. So there I've got my holes and I've got my two cuts on there. Now what a lot of people might do at this point is they might mirror those things over. They might mirror them one at a time. I want to sort of try to be as efficient or lazy, you might say, as I can. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mirror a bunch of features all at once. So the next thing I want to go and work on is uh, the cutout area on the top. Uh, where where the where this part kind of opens up and forms the inside cavity. So I'm going to create a sketch on this top plane, and I'm just going to kind of uh, start from the midpoint, and I'm going to come down some amount. I'm going to come up. I'm going to come to about right there, and then I'm going to switch over to the arc command. I'm going to do a three-point arc. So I'm going to kind of go from here to here and drag that out. I'm not being too careful about this. And then I want to create one more arc, another three-point arc, uh, and that's going to go from there to there, sort of. Okay, that looks all right. I'm not doing the greatest job in the world drawing this, but it's going to work out okay. Uh, now I'm just going to start the line command, and I want to connect. I want to go straight vertically back up to the top. And so now I'm starting. I'm going. I'm ready to start adding a couple dimensions on here. So. Um, I'm going to grab a dimension from this bottom horizontal line to that horizontal line. That dimension is going to be 0.94, which is going to move everything sort of down a little bit. Okay, good. I know the radius of this dimension is going to be 0.4. And the radius of this uh, is going to be 2 inches. So go ahead and add that in there. I might drag that around a little bit. Um, we can kind of fix this with constraints in a minute. And then I know that the dimension between here and here is going to be 0.6. And the dimension between here and here is going to be 0.8. Okay, so that moved around a little bit. I can kind of drag things to get them a little bit more in a position the way that I want them. So I'm just going to kind of pull some things down here a little bit. And then there's a couple things I know about this that I know that... Uh, this end point and the center of the circle are in line with each other, so that kind of gets that located the right spot. I know there's a tangent conditions between this arc and this arc right there. So now I'm kind of getting my shape a little bit better. I know the dimension between the bottom and the center of this is going to be 3.3. .3. So as, as I continue to do this, I'm gonna see that things are gonna get uh, better and better. Now if I look, this arc can really move anywhere it wants to, but on the print, it shows me that the center of this is concentric to this, so it would be the mirror side of it. So I know another way I could say that is I could say, let me just hit a quick undo on that. I could add a horizontal constraint between those two points. And when I do, now you can see my cavity is uh, this cutout that's gonna be, everything on there is perfectly black and it's fully defined. So I'll finish my sketch. I'm gonna start the extrude command, click this area, I'm gonna drag the arrow I want, the direction I want to go. And again, for distance, I'm going to say all, and I'll choose OK. And so now I've got my cutout going through the part. Now I can uh, save myself a lot of time by doing a mass mirror at the same time. So I'm going to choose Create, Mirror, and I don't want to mirror fe faces. I want to mirror features. And with one of the recent updates of Fusion, you can now click those features either in the timeline, as we always did, or we can choose them in the model. So I want to mirror that. I want to mirror that hole, and I'm going to try to mirror if it'll let me. Looks like that's not going to work out so well, so I'll just grab it in the timeline. I want to mirror that cut right there. I'm going to select my mirror plane. My plane is going to be right there. I'll hit OK. And there I have my cutout on the part. Looks like it didn't all come across. Let's try that again one more time. Create a mirror. I'm going to mirror features so that 
I'm gonna choose that, that, and that as the three things that I wanna mirror. My mirror plane is gonna be that, and we'll choose okay. Now that I got the angle on at that time, so it's got everything I need. And the only thing I really have left is to do one more fillet. So I'm gonna grab the fillet command. I'm gonna grab that edge and that edge, and that radius is gonna be 0.25. And that should complete my part. So hopefully this gives you a little insight on how I kind of think about going and drawing things. Nothing that I really did in this part was complex. You might say that last sketch that I created might have been the most complex thing, and even that wasn't so bad. So uh, hopefully that gives you a bit of a breakdown of you know how you can uh, approach parts and kind of break them down into sections that logically make it easy to draw this part. If you try to draw the entire outside profile, uh, the, the total perimeter on this part using Fusion, it would be a much more difficult task. I'm not even sure the constraint engine would handle it right now. Um, and it would take you a lot more time. So you can see by creating simple shapes, you can get a pretty efficiently drawn part. So I hope you guys like that. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if there's anything you'd like to see, as always, go ahead and send me an email to info at mechanicaladvantage.com. Thanks for watching.